Well guys, we're going to get on to part two here of the RM250 refresh. I'm sitting here, I actually tested out, I've been cleaning on a little bit of this um, just to see if it'd clean up okay or if I'd have to take the motor out, but I think I'm going to leave it in there, honestly. Um, I know taking the easy way out, get some hate comments for that maybe, but um, that's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think I'm going to just leave it in there because, I mean, other than just some dirt and grime buildup, I don't see really any leaks or anything that would cause me to want to tear the motor down. So I'm going to leave it with the whole budget refresh, rebuild, whatever you want to call it thing. Um, it just makes more sense to not do work if you don't have to because the idea, sorry about the noise, the idea is to... Uh, get it running and get it reliable and get it nice looking and then maybe uh, turn around and sell it when we're done so um, if we're gonna make a little bit of money on fixing up these little bikes and uh, selling them then we have to turn them, turn them out of here as quick as we can so that's the idea um, so sorry if you were hoping to see the motor get pulled out I'm sure um, in the future whatever whatever next bike we get or something I'm sure eventually we'll get a bike that's gonna have to have the motor taken out and we'll do that when that time comes so um, but yeah so I've been cleaning on this a little bit it looks pretty good it's cleaning up pretty good I mean of course without getting the aluminum like bead blasted and stuff it's not gonna look brand new but it looks clean and it looks it looks proper so uh, we're gonna leave it like that I'm gonna get a little bit of the frame paint and uh, just hit some of these areas that are kind of just worn down and make them look good again. But other than that, I think we're we're good. I'm getting ready to. I'm gonna pause this part of the video here. I'm gonna turn the bike around so we can get to the other side, and I'll show you how I was cleaning on this on the other side. So if anybody's wanting to just touch up their engine, make it look a little bit cleaner, look a little bit nicer. I mean, again, it's not perfect, but make a look make it look a little bit nicer than it did then uh, this might be helpful for you so um, I'm gonna pause this and I will pick back up with you in just a second alright we got the bike turned around um, obviously this is the other side <laughs> and um, so you can see you can see how dirty nasty this is and uh, hopefully we'll get this cleaned up oh and we also have to look at um, the water pump I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to show you, hopefully show you the hairline crack that's on the very, the very bottom bolt down here. Um, you can see where they have siliconed and siliconed and tried to seal it up, but no luck with that. And uh, so we, we've got actually, we found a, a housing, I got a housing coming so we can get that, get that replaced and get that leak fixed. And I think... The bike will be ready to go after we get that and then you know of course finish cleaning it and put it back together so uh, let me get uh get the stuff situated here we're just going to be using a little bit of just car quest wherever brake parts cleaner uh, no plug for them you can use whatever you want but that's what I have and then of course I'm a good old handy blue shop house not sponsored by them either but I will plug for them because they are awesome. They're the best. And uh, then just a little handy wire brush. Um, you want to use a fine, like brass type wired brush because it is it won't scar the case. You don't want to use something hard and and abrasive because you don't want like lines and stuff. You just want something to knock to to knock the crap off basically. So. Um, get you a nice like brass fine wire test you a spot that you can't see first and just rub make sure it doesn't leave any like actual etches or uh, any junk in in the case I mean you might like that look I don't particularly like that look so um, I'm gonna take my time and be careful with it I'm just basically I mean I'm not trying to again make it look brand new but uh, I am trying to just bring the aluminum back out of it so so we'll do that um, let me, I'm going to take this Kickstarter off real quick. So uh, let me get you set up and we'll get uh, get this on a little time lapse.
uh, I had this water pump off already, so that's why there's no gasket. So before anybody says, oh, that's why it's leaking, it's got no gasket, I did, I did have it off. So, just so you know. Um, the reason I put it back on, I just want, didn't want to lose any hardware or anything. I, it was leaking a little bit, so I just put it back on so it wouldn't leak. But um, So yeah, it's got the two dowels right there, so those are good. I looked around the case. Everything around the case is good. I don't know if you can see that right there. There's a crack right around there. I don't know if you can see that. I might, um, I'll try to take a picture so you can see it, but if I get it close enough, I don't know if you can, but it like goes up and around and around. So yeah, I'm fairly certain that's what's causing my leak. If anybody else knows or has seen that or uh, knows any better, you can chime in. Um, but I think I'm just replacing the housing. All this stuff looks okay. Of course, I'll clean the gasket surfaces off. I got a new housing and a new gasket coming in, but um, other than that, it looks okay. So I'm just going to leave it as is, or uh, leave this leave this as is and get put the new case and new gasket on and hopefully be done with it. Um, any pointers or things to note, just let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. So, I guess uh, I'll finish cleaning this side. I time lapse the top power part so you can see that. I'll finish just cleaning this side and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check out some more stuff or clean some more stuff. So I figured we'd go ahead and uh, wipe the rest of this down. The only bad thing about two strokes, well I shouldn't say the only thing, one of the only things bad about two strokes is the, uh, well, and not all of them do it. If they're tuned right, they do it minimally, but the guy that had this before me, or before him, or whoever, um, it has, I think they call it spooge or splooge or something like that. I think it's spooge, like the oil and like when they run real rich and it leaks out the exhaust. This has got a ton, a ton of it. Um, and I pressure washed this thing. It was really bad. I mean, it was caked thick on here. But uh, we're trying to just wipe it off and clean it up, make it look better. I mean, again, it's a dirt bike, so it's not like we're going to take it to a like a car and bike show or something. We're going to get it dirty. We're going to we're going to see it get you know muddy and crap. So it's not like I'm trying to make it perfect. I just I like them. I like my bikes to look nice and to be clean as they can be. And again, if we end up selling it, I want it to I want it to show nice, nice as it can, without going too crazy. And I will say this as a pointer to those that might be watching this and learning: um, you can use brake you can use brake cleaner. Some are more harsh than others. But I wouldn't take a chance. Brake cleaner will discolor um, certain things if it's left on long enough. So if you do spray it directly on an area, just don't let it sit there for a long time. You want to you wanna just make sure that it's just long enough to get the dirt off. That's it. Or the mud or grease or whatever. Just long enough to get it off because whatever... If you leave it on there for longer periods of time, it could discolor the aluminum. Another thing you want to do too when you're looking for certain things or looking over certain things, little things like the cotter pins and the brake pedal cotter pins on the brake bolt, axle cotter pins, I mean all those different things. You want to make sure, sorry about the car noise, it'll be gone soon. But anyways, you want to make sure that those are still there because if they are gone and that bolt comes loose or works loose and you're in the middle of hitting, you know, if you're doing any jumping or racing or whatever, you're in the middle of a jump or in the middle of a hill climb or something and that, that thing falls off or going downhill for the for that matter on the brake and that thing falls off you'll be uh 
you'll be in some danger. So it's always good to check over your bike. I like to check over my bike every time I go riding. I just, I mean, there's not much here, so it's easy to go through all the little wear and tear items. Check your brakes. Check your linkage. Check your, uh, you know, your fork seals. Make sure they haven't le started leaking. Um, check your throttle linkage. You know, you don't want your throttle linkage getting stuck. Um, all kinds of stuff. You know, if you if you have a two-stroke, check your plug. Make sure it looks okay. Um, you know, if you if you tune your two-stroke right, you should be good. I mean, it should never foul a plug out if you ride it hard. Um, but I've also had bikes that, for the life of me, I could not get the thing tuned, and it would it would foul out if I try to if I did too much trail riding. It would it would just foul foul out on me. So. I mean, just stuff like that. Look it over. Look over your chain. Look over your. Another big thing is your disc brake bolts and your your sprocket bolts. I've had those work loose before. Check all of those. Um, so yeah, just just go over go over your bike. Check it out. Make sure not only for your safety, but also if something does work loose, uh, it's going to cost you money to fix it or replace it. So it's good to good to go over all those things. Well, we got a few things knocked out today. Carburetor's all cleaned up, ready to go. I'm waiting on a throttle cable to come in so I can put all of this back together. Um, so that should be here soon. Um, pipes clean, we did that in the last video. Filter we did in the last video. Tank we did in the last video. Seat cover should be coming in tomorrow. So we'll be doing a video on that. Um, we cleaned the subframe. Clean the bike for the most part. I'm going to finish wiping down the frame and then spot paint, like I said, spot paint some stuff. Um, so then that'll be pretty much wrapped up. We can clean up the wiring and get it all back. Um, oh, yeah, cleaned up the air box. It's drying. We'll finish it later. Um, let's see. I think we made a pretty good dent. Cleaned up, like I said, the case and stuff. Um, adjusted the kickstart lever. It's. <laughs> You know how they go. Little, little wiggly for my taste. I might end up having to order a new one just because I'm picky like that. But I don't know. I guess if it gets the job done, why spend money? Um, a lot of boxes. We're going to be doing an unboxing video soon. And that's all for this. So we can start getting this thing put back together. Um, I do want to start putting it back together. I still have to decide on the radiators. We talked about that in the first video. I want to figure that out. I need to clean up these silicone hoses. Um, I need to clean the silencer. I need to decide on um, if I'm going to put any graphics on it and the shroud covers. So, well, I'll wait. I'll say that. It'll be kind of a surprise for the unboxing and we'll go through what I chose and why I chose it when we unbox them. So, um, But yeah, so I think I'm going to wrap up this will be part two. I know, uh, you know, we just been piddling, cleaning parts, so maybe that's not been as exciting as you would have hoped, but it just goes through all the little things that you do when you get a bike. If you want to make it look nice and make it reliable, check everything over and then replace what you, uh, what you want to replace. <laughs>